Hey guys, my name is Madison Lida and I'm a missions counselor here at Cameron University. Today I'm going to be taking you on a virtual tour of our academic commons. Personally, the Academic Commons is one of my favorite places here at Cameron University. It was my home during my undergrad while enrolled here at Cameron University, and it's where I spent all of my time my four years here. Um, the Academic Commons is mostly home to communications and journalism majors. I'm going to take you around to a few of the rooms and show you a bit about this department because I really think that you're going to love it. It is super awesome here. So right now I'm actually gonna take you into one of my favorite places in this department, which is the newsroom. The newsroom, if you didn't know, is home to our Cameron Collegian student-ran, student-led student newspaper. Um, I really love this room and I really love this opportunity that Cameron gives students because I was fortunate enough to spend my four years um, involved with the Cameron newspaper and I was the managing editor my senior year of college. Um, if you are interested in news writing or you're going to school to be a communication or journalism major, for sure this is one of the great options in this department for you to um, get involved with. Um, but you don't always have to just be a journalism or communication major to get involved with student media. During my time here in the newspaper, I had colleagues that wrote for the paper that were in biology, they were art majors, we had English majors, so on and so forth. Um, you don't have to be a media student to get involved with student media. Um, it looks really great on college or um, graduate resumes for job resumes. I got to use it on my personal professional resume. Um, it gives you the opportunity to have real professional experience in the news field, in the writing field, in communication. And that just all in all looks really good on a resume no matter what you're doing. Um, it's, also aw it's also awesome because the advisor for the newspaper helps you from the ground up. When you come into the newspaper, you don't have to know a single thing. You, Of course, you have to know how to write, but you don't have to be perfect at it. I definitely was not and still am not a perfect writer. Um, I didn't know anything about photography and I definitely didn't know anything about design or layout or how to use the entire Adobe Creative Suite. But that is something you definitely learn here. Um, the advisor, Mr. Bublitz, he, my first year here, he helped us from the ground up open up all the Adobe Suite profiles or applications and he helped us learn every single thing that I know today about those programs. It is definitely something that I love to talk to soon to be Aggies about um, because everyone that comes and joins the paper has a really good time. Um, like I said, I didn't know anything about student media before coming in here. And by the time I left, I had four years of media experience. I got to learn photography. I got to learn um, layout and design, and I got to, got to be familiar with the entire Adobe suite. Another cool thing about if you're a journalism and a communication major, however, is that you do get access to the entire Adobe um, cloud suite for free. It's included in all your tuition and um, student fees, but it is free for you here, which is great because it is an expensive program to have on your own post-grad. Trust me. There is actually a some copies of the recent newspaper here that I actually wanted to go ahead and show you since we just left that room. Um, the really cool thing about these papers is it is literally completely done by students here at Cameron. Um, the photography, the graphics, the writing, everything is done by actual Cameron students. You have an advisor that helps guide you along the way, helps you come up with some story ideas, helps um, give you some advice for how to phrase something in your writing, um, what kind of shots that might be best for a story to get like picture wise. But other than that, it is completely on you as a student. And I really love that because it lets, allows you to be creative and independent. Um, that being said, I am going to take you down to the next room. As you've probably heard um, throughout the other videos in the virtual tour along the way is um, that Cameron is no stranger to tutoring. Um, it is an opportunity for all students here at Cameron University. We strive for you to have proper education and for you to really absorb the material rather than just read it, know it for the second and then forget it later. We want you to know it whether you're testing or whether it's relevant to your degree or not. Um, we have plenty of tutoring centers all around the university and this is one of them um, but it's not just open to tutoring uh, 
So it is a tutoring center, but you can also book out the room so that you can use it for personal reasons. I've had um, colleagues that did job interviews in that room. Um, they were with a mentor that helped them on interviews, so on and so forth. So it's you can use this room really for anything, but mostly it's the tutoring center. So now we are at one of our testing centers here on campus. This is one of two testing centers, and this is personally my favorite testing center on campus. This. this is the Sarkis Computer Lab and um, the reason why I love this testing center is because it's pretty much open all the time. Um, they do have varying hours but I like the availability of this one and how relaxed it is versus the testing center in Shepler but it is still really great um, both options. So we're gonna go inside there there is some students testing so I'm gonna try to lower my voice a bit. So we're coming into the Sarkis Computer Lab and um, another cool thing about this lab specifically is that it's not just for testing. Um, you can actually use these computers if you're just a student and you want to work on some homework or um, you just want to get some other things done. Just like every other computer lab on campus, it is available to all students, whether you're a communication major, journalism major, it's not specific to your degree. So we are now leaving the Sarkis Computer Lab and I am take you down, taking you down to another really great opportunity here on campus. We actually can't go inside this room, but I'll make sure to include some um, footage of what it looks inside or what it looks like inside. Now that room is CU TV. It is our TV studio here in the Academic Commons. And the reason why this is a great opportunity is because, like I said, if you're a communication, journalism major, or honestly, any major, um, you will have the opportunity to get involved with something called CU TV, and it is our student broadcast TV station. Um, it is a really, really great opportunity, especially if you wanna go into the news field, reporting, um, if you wanna go into producing TV shows, movies, whatever, this is gonna be fantastic on your resume. Um, the advisor that runs CUTV is Dr. Matt Jenkins. He is a fantastic mentor to have if you have the opportunity to be mentored by him. He has actually produced and directed several films over the years and um, they're really fantastic pieces. And if you have, he actually lets students help him out um, when he's filming. And that is really great on a, call, on a resume for anywhere, no matter where you're going or who you are, what you're doing. Um, it is a fantastic opportunity to look at. We have the second best TV uh, studio in the state of Oklahoma and that is really big deal considering we are a very small school and it is very nice to have. I love to talk about it. Um, I'm going to include some footage of what it looks like in there. We have green screen, several cameras, um, we have a whole studio area with a desk and um, TVs in the background. It basically looks like a news station and then there's the back end of it with um, the switchboards, soundboards, so on and so forth. You get to take tons of classes in here. Um, one of the classes that I got to take in here was TV studio production. And um, I believe the other one was news field production or field production. Either way, tons of classes that you have the opportunity to take in here. You also get to film some personal projects in here. And the faculty, faculty here is just so fantastic with students, allowing them to get into these rooms and use them. Um, the equipment here is really amazing and I believe that you have so much fun there. It is one of the awesome opportunities here on campus. So one of the other opportunities here at Cameron is behind this door. There isn't a sign that says what it is, but it is our audio bay. It is really cool. Uh, behind this door, there are three different bays with um, full audio bays that are basically re replicas of radio stations. Um, I got to do radio broadcast in here and can't think off the top of my head, but a couple other classes in here where you get to do um, radio production and you get to do, we also use this for whenever we're doing some uh, some projects for Dr. Jenkins um, that involved filming and voiceover. You get to film your voiceover in here and it is like state of the art equipment. It is fantastic to be able to play with and just utilize as a student. Um, I also know, I also had colleagues that got to use it to mix um, music for their personal lives. Um, people who wanted to mix their own audios or to produce their own music, that is another opportunity for you here. Um, Cameron is really great about supporting all student dreams rather than one. They know that 
um, your major doesn't box you in. Just because you're a journalism major doesn't mean you have to be a news anchor, doesn't mean that you have to be a news writer. You can be anything and they understand that. So behind me is uh, Mr. Bublet's store. He is the advisor for the Cameron Collegian. So that's where he is. If you ever need to get into contact with him, he is really easy to talk to and um, loves helping any and all students. Um, this is gonna be Dr. Matt Jenkins' door. Um, I like to call him Dr. J. He's a pretty cool guy, um, loved every single one of his classes. He does CU TV, like I just said. And this is gonna be Dr. David Zioli. And we're gonna head down here. So behind me here, is Dr. Zhao. Dr. Zhao is another great resource in, the, in this department. She teaches a lot of the photography and website design classes. I got to take photography one with her and um, photojournalism. And that class, it, it was really great. It actually sparked one of my passions for photography and film. And um, she's a really great teacher. You can come in with absolutely no knowledge about photography and she'll just work you from the ground up. Um, there was even a time where I came in to talk to her about a project and she actually sent me home with resources from her personal library. Um, the professors here at Cameron and in this department in general are just so fantastic with um, how much they love their students and how much they want them to learn and want to provide them with the resources to learn. So she's a great person if you want to learn photography and um, she also teaches Dreamweaver to build your own websites. So contact her if that's what you want to learn. This is um, John Cunningham. So John Cunningham actually runs um, our eSports, which is what I'm about to show you. It's right around here. I'm also going to include some footage of eSports here. Uh, that's the wrong way. I'm going to show you um, some footage of eSports because it is locked up right now but I'll show you what it looks like during the day. Um, eSports is a fairly new opportunity that we introduced here in the department. It is competitive online gaming. And um, so if you love to game, whether it's on the computer, Xbox, so be it, this would be a great opportunity for you. It's a ton of fun. Um, I had the opportunity to watch some of the kids play around and compete and they have a ton of fun and they all bond so well. Um, if you're just looking for something extracurricular to do on campus without like a, you don't want to be involved in a club or a group and you just kind of want to hang out and make some friends and do something fun outside of service or volunteer work, this is going to be great for you. They have so much fun. It is such a good opportunity. They have, that's a sneak peek of what it looks inside. It's super cool, super, they have tons of LED, Alienware computers and so this is definitely an opportunity for you to check out. If you're interested in it, please contact us. We'd love to share about it. So behind this door is Dr. Walton. Dr. Walton is a communication professor. Um, he, I got to do a class with him called Gender Communication and it, he teaches a lot of the classes that I like to say open your eyes as a human. Um, he's a fantastic professor. He's so funny. He loves his students. He's so cool. Um, I believe all the professors in this department are so awesome and fun to just get to know and attend classes with. They are definitely the kind of professors that make you want to go to class. You know, they care about you, um, they care about your work, they love to talk to you and socialize with you in class and they just make class really fun and memorable and he's definitely one of those professors, one of the funniest professors that I've ever had the privilege to have class with. And this here is Miss Katie Stringer. Katie Stringer helps run the, I believe she's the debate coach for our speech and debate, debate team, which is housed here in the Academic Commons. Another great opportunity if you're interested in debate or you just love pub public speaking or you're a good writer, a good speaker, so be it. She's, that's gonna be a great opportunity for you here. Um, they are national champions, our speech and debate team. We have incredible kids that compete every year on this team. And um, I'm fortunate enough to know that you don't have to have a, a true background in debate to be considered for this team. You do do tryouts, um, which you can get into contact with Katie Stringer about. I can get you information to her, um, but you don't have to have a true background in it. If you're a beginner or you just know that you love to, you love to speak or you're passionate about certain subjects, um, you can get involved with the speech and debate team and there are lots of opportunities waiting literally behind that door for you. <laughs> 
One of the other professors that you get the opportunity to take classes with in this department, um, his office isn't located here, it's actually located in Nance Boyer. He is the chair of the English Communication English and Foreign Languages Department, um, and it is Dr. Christopher Keller. He is an incredible professor. One of the classes that he teaches is media literacy, and um, he's also one of those professors that I like to say really opens your eyes to the world and um, how we communicate and how we absorb information as human beings. He is, if you ever have the opportunity to take a class with him, whether it is just communication um, or whether it's media literacy, take that opportunity. He is a fantastic professor and you have the opportunity to learn so much incredible information from him. He is so passionate about his subject and he is so passionate about students in general. So if you ever have that opportunity, please check him out. Um, he is a fantastic chair and a fantastic professor. This is the last room in the department that I'm really gonna show you, but this is our computer lab. It's technically called the Mac Lab, but it's not a Mac Lab anymore. We use Dell computers now. Um, but this is where, as a journalism student, and sometimes even public relations students, this is where about 90% of your classes are probably gonna take place. Um, actually, it's pretty generous. Like 70% of your classes are gonna take place here. They are fully equipped computers. They are updated to the newest software anytime it comes out. Um, they always use the newest Adobe products, so newest Microsoft products. So you never have to worry about using outdated software and it is pretty much open all the time. Um, the students have access to printing here, um, full access to the computers. This is where the professor presents, and sometimes they use this here to broadcast onto the board. Um, but yeah, a lot of my classes took place here. This is where many of my classes, especially with Dr. Zhao, took place. Um, I learned how to use the Dreamweaver program at that computer right there. Um, and one of my first media writing classes took place. I was right there at that computer made a lot of great friends in here and it is definitely a good lab to utilize. It's super quiet in here. Um, so you definitely get that, that good amount of privacy that you need. Um, and it is across the hall from all your professors. So if you ever need their help, they're right there. And yeah, so we're gonna move on to outside. So I think this is gonna be pretty much our last stop here on the Academic Commons grounds. And this is basically the outside um, patio. This is gonna be home to a bunch of tables and chairs for you to socialize with other colleagues, uh, get some work done, get some fresh air outside of classes, but it is also close to your classes, so you'd never have to worry about going too far. Um, it's really great, especially in the springtime, whenever the weather's just right and it's not too hot, not too cold. You can enjoy some lunch out here. You can get some work done. It's even nice in the fall and it is pretty much in the center of campus. You can see right there, we've got the science complex and right over there, we've got the MCC and right there, we've got Nan Square. And so yeah, this is the outside of the academic commons. Really loved spending time here. And I'm gonna kind of take you to the front. The, it's pretty much the front entrance of the academic commons, we like to call it. Um, and that'll be really the last spot. All right, so this is really our last stop. This is um, the wrap up of our tour of the academic commons. This is the front entrance. Um, basically just wanted to use this time to thank you for following me along this tour. I don't think that really you can put into words how phenomenal this department is and how much it meant to me as a student. Um, there are so many fantastic opportunities lying behind those doors, behind those walls. Um, whether you want to be a media student or you just want to learn about public relations, you want to learn how to be a better speech giver, whether you just want to learn how to write better, this is a fantastic department to look into and it is so versatile in your career. If I like to say if you're a student that doesn't necessarily know what they want to do in life and they just know they want to get a college degree, something really great to look at is a communications degree. Um, it's actually called strategic communications and it is so versatile you can use it basically in any field you can get basically any job that you want with it except you know you can't be a, 
a scientist or a doctor with it, um, but it'll get you in the door at many places. It is definitely a degree that'll teach you skills and that is useful in any field, any career field. Um, so give us a look, uh, contact me or any of the professors that I mentioned, and they'll be more than happy to, to give you more information and come visit me and let me give you a tour of this awesome department.
Hello everybody, my name is Melanie, I'm a senior, I'm a chemistry major, and I'm also a student athlete here in Gamera. And I'm going to show you one of my favorite plays in here, the IE Rec Center. So basically it's open to all students in Cameroon. You don't have to be fully enrolled, just taking one class is enough. You only need your ID and when you just come in, you only need to swipe with your ID and you can enjoy all the facilities we have in here. We're in the pool area now, one of the places you could enjoy here in the rec center. It's open as long as the gym is open. You have a huge climatized pool right here where I spend my whole summer swimming in the campus. You will have also a lifeguard there watching you the whole time. So if you aren't an expert swimming, you can become an expert here in the rec center. And also if you like getting tan or just chilling outside, maybe just refreshing yourself and going out, right there you have a little garden with a lot of chairs where you can just relax, listen to music and distress about classes. So we're in the basketball courts now. So you can just take a ball out in the desk. You can have a basketball, a volleyball. You can set up volleyball nets right here. This is a multi-sport court when we also held intramural sports. So you can just come here by yourself. You can bring a friend or you can just make sport with another Cameroon students, make a team and come here and have just some fun. Right now, we're in the little area behind the basketball court. So here, there is a lot going on in this little place. We have racquetball courts. So this is a really fun sport. So you just go to the desk center and you just check out rackets and balls. You can be by yourself, you can have a team. So also, as you can see over there, there is a spinning room. And don't worry if you don't know how to bike by yourself. Um, there are classes going on in the rec center all the time. They are free, they are included in your camera on fees. You have yoga, you have spinning classes, you have some cardio classes also. So everything is held here and to encourage your fitness and health. Also, if you don't like spinning type bikes, you have your own bikes that you can spin by yourself setting the mode you like, some headphones, and just going all the way through. So we level up, we're in the first floor of the Aggie Rec Center right now. Behind me, there are the cardio machines. So if the weather is not good outside to get some running in, you don't have any excuse. The Rec Center is open all the week long, and you have all the machines that you need for a good workout. Moving around, on the other side, if cardio is not your thing and you like more like weight stuff, all the weight machines for strength you need are right here. So the only condition is that before you use them, you have to sanitize them. After you use them, just take all your sweat out and that's it. So this is the last place of the Aggie Rec Center. It's just individual training area. It has a maximum capacity for only three people to give social distancing and you have all the equipment you need. As you can see over here, you have steps, you have some weight, you have that. And also if you feel like boxing, don't miss the opportunity just to hit something here. You will have bands and you will have yoga balls. I really enjoy doing yoga over here. So it's a really good place to just come by yourself or work as a team. One last thing not to forget about the rec center. It's all around the, set, the first floor. It has a track area. So it changes directions every day. So watch out not to crash somebody. And each line is for running, jogging and walking. So. Depends on what you feel like each day, read which line you should be in, which direction according to the day, and that will be it. So this was the Aggie Rec Center. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do and hope to see you around here soon.
Hello, my name is Austin Patterson. I'm an admissions counselor here at Cameron University, and we're gonna go over the uh, art building today. Uh, so as you can see, there's a lot of carpeted walls over here. We're actually preparing for a student exhibition here on April 8th, 2021. Uh, so if you're interested, definitely uh, come take a look and check out all of our students' work. Um, but we're actually gonna go over that gallery space and kind of show you a little bit of what's going on. Uh, so coming in here to the main art gallery, uh, you can see we got more carpeted walls set up. So this gallery area was designed uh, specifically to showcase students' art uh, to those uh, interested in checking out all the stuff that's around campus. So uh, you're gonna see tons of different uh, art styles, such as uh, sculpture. We got some masks being worked on here, some paintings. Uh, looks like that's some gouache and acrylic artworks as well. Uh, we also got some watercolor works, and uh, you can see that uh, we got a couple more her sculpture works as well. Uh, here's a really good oil painting right over here. Uh, so pretty much there's a whole bunch of different um, genres of uh, visual arts that uh, are going to be available to see over here in the art gallery on campus. Uh, so if you're interested, check that out April 8th. And we're just going to go ahead and move on. All right, so coming out of the gallery, we're going to come and visit the uh, sculpture room here for a second. All right, so uh, we have actually a whole bunch of different uh, types of sculpture that are available to you uh, here at the art building. Uh, so they're working with uh, paper mache and cardboard right now, but you'll also have uh, access to ceramic works, uh, clay. You'll also have uh, welding and uh, pretty much any other type of material that you can work with. Uh, the professors here are definitely willing to work with you for whatever project that you're interested in and uh, they have a whole bunch of cool stuff going on. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and move on from here. All right, moving on from the sculpture room, we're gonna move on to the student hallway. So this is the hallway where students are gonna have their artwork showcased from a recently completed project. Uh, so the professors pretty much take all the works from their uh, fundamental classes uh, and pretty much all of their training courses and have them hung up over here. So right here, you're seeing a whole bunch of uh, what's called imprimatura paintings, uh, which are pretty much paintings done with like one color, uh, normally an earth tone. Um, and this is just pretty much training to get them used to using oil paints and stuff like that. And uh, this is actually some artwork done by some advanced uh, drawing students. Uh, so it looks like it's made in oil pastel, chalk pastel, and a little bit of colored pencil. So it's really having them delve into the uh, mixed media portion of uh, the arts and stuff. And we also have a lot of charcoal in the graphite works as well. Uh, normally you see a lot of graphite works uh, towards the fall semester and the uh, charcoal works are very prominent uh, across the spring semesters. So that's what you're gonna be seeing. All right, so uh, one of the rooms uh, that are adjacent to the hallway is going to be the painting room. So this is the main painting room over here. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of uh, very sturdy wooden easels that are set up uh, with tabarets over here to kind of house the uh, um, paints as well as the brushes and stuff. Uh, so this is where a lot of the beginner painters and the advanced painters are going to be working. Uh, but uh, right now it looks like uh, the bulk of the setups are going to be for beginning painters. Uh, so as you can see right here, this is called a poster study. It's a small version of a painting done to pretty much give a general look at what the uh, painting is going to look like towards the end. And I'm gonna show you a more completed one here in a second. Uh, but uh, they're also basing all of their stuff off of still life. So you're going to be seeing a lot of uh, very weird setups uh, because they're trying to learn to paint from life. So that's what you're going to be seeing a lot of. Uh, so right over here is going to be a more completed version. Uh, so what this is, is they took a painting called a grisaille painting, which is a painting they've done in black and white. And uh, they're using a transparent style of oil paints to kind of overlay over the black and white painting to kind of give it color and stuff. So that's pretty much what you're gonna be seeing a lot of over here, because it looks like that's gonna be the project that they're working on. That's normally the project that they do after they do the imprimaturas. So you're gonna see a whole bunch of really cool 
whole paintings and stuff like this one going on uh, to cover these still life paintings right here. And just to give you a good look at what the uh, advanced work looks like since uh, they don't have too much up right now. Uh, this is actually uh, some advanced work from uh, an artist that uh, does a lot of work in sculpture. Um, so I believe this is Rigo Bertos. Uh, so he pretty much decided that he wanted to combine his uh, passion for sculpture and oil painting into one bit. So you can kind of see where he made these masks and sculpture and he applied them to these paintings to give them a, a three-dimensional touch, which is definitely something that you can do. And uh, he's uh, definitely um, flexing his creative muscles in that department. So you're gonna see a lot of crazy cool stuff uh, like that over here at the art department. So if you're interested, come and check it out. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and move on and show you some of the other cool places. All right, so this is the foundation studio right here. So this is normally where uh, you would see a lot of critiques happening. Right now there is overflow sculpture class being taken place uh, over here. Uh, you would also normally see a lot of demonstration works going on as well. So that's uh, a lot of stuff that you would see in a lot of these uh, uh, pretty much more traditional uh, table uh, seat style classrooms. All right, so this is gonna be the secondary painting room. It's also used as the illustration room sometimes and also for uh, watercolors as well. Um, but uh, the other times it is known as the secondary painting room. So you can see that we also have some advanced works going on over here. Uh, this is an experimentation of using multiple layers of canvases to create one painting, which is super interesting. It's really cool. Uh, so one really big thing about this room is the reason why you're going to be seeing a whole bunch of uh, painters in here. Uh, it's the gesso room. It's also the room for setting up any canvases that they're building on their own. Uh, so they pretty much get their own wooden frames. They get their own canvas uh, rolls and they stretch their canvases on their own. Uh, they do have the option of getting pre-made canvases. You can see one that was purchased over there by Hobby Lobby very recently. Um, so you have the option of doing that if you don't want to stretch your canvases, but one thing that is absolutely important for beginning painting is that you at least learn how to stretch a canvas. Uh, so that becomes an option for you in the future. So, uh, you're going to see a lot more advanced artworks, uh, that play with, uh, the ideas of texture and, uh, interesting lighting. And you're going to see a lot of surreal stuff as well. Uh, you can see we got this really cool cool uh, figure study as well. And we just got a lot of really cool stuff going on over here in this room, uh, since the looks like the majority of the advanced painters are gonna be over here. And so now that we're done with that, we're gonna go and check out the uh, critiquing areas, cause I think that'd be a cool idea. All right, so this room is going to be the drawing room for a lot of the beginning students. I believe some advanced students are also in here. So you're gonna see a lot of the really big artworks being set up over here. So let me go ahead and show you some of this stuff. Uh, it looks like a oil pastel drawing is just being worked on. So you're gonna see a little bit of that. Um, looks like they also have some finished charcoal works. Um, looks like that one is on its way to being completed right there. Uh, so pretty much um, if you're a beginning student or an advanced student, pretty much if you have a drawing related class, it's going to end up here. Uh, so. Um, that's fundamentals of uh, drawing via graphite, charcoal, uh, and even getting started with uh, mixed media works. Uh, a lot of the stuff is going to be over here. And also for uh, those of you that need to take a figure drawing class, uh, the model would normally be posted right here on this podium stand right here, uh, center face um, to the room. All the blinds will be uh, shuttered and they're also dark tinted so no one could really see in that well. Um, so that pretty much gives the, uh, the model, uh, as much privacy as needed, uh, in order to, uh, work on these figure drawing assignments, uh, to pretty much teach, uh, the students about the, uh, form of the human body, uh, and et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, that's pretty much, uh, all there is to know about the, uh, uh drawing studio over here. Uh, so we're going to go move on to something pretty cool. Let me show you guys. All right, everybody, masks on because we got a uh, classroom going on in this area, but this is the printmaking studio. 
Uh, so they work on several different types of printmaking available. Uh, so right there we have a, uh, a screen printer. Um, we also got uh, different types of stuff going on. They're actually working on watercolor right now and also working on hanging for that art show that I was talking about earlier. But uh, here, let me take you over here so I can show you some of the different types of uh, printmaking that we have available. This is a really good example right here. Uh, this is an example of a lino cut print or also known as a linoleum cut print. Uh, so pretty much you just carve into the linoleum and anything that wasn't carved on, you can roll the ink onto and that transfers over to the paper. Uh, so we also have dry points over here. So this works in the exact opposite process where it's on a plexiglass. You carve into the plexiglass with a sharp object or you score it essentially. And the ink gets caught up in those scores. And uh, when you roll the ink on, the ink gets caught up in those uh, scores. And when you roll it over to print, uh, pretty much all this area right here is excess ink that gets applied on as well. But it's just anywhere that was scored uh, gets the ink in darker quantities. So that's what you're gonna see. So we got other examples of screen printing going on over here. Excuse me, pardon me. And this is going to be a studio area where they work on the litho stones. So the litho stones are a very interesting process. So let me walk you over here and show you an example of one. So this is the shelf where they keep the litho stones. Uh, they essentially take out one of these stones. Now these stones are extremely heavy and they're not recommended to be carried by yourself if they're bigger than like an eight and a half by 11 size. Uh, so they have this little cart right here that uh, they press this lever right here to lift the stones up into the air. And then they take it back over to this washing station. So they'll rinse off the stone. They'll add special grit to it to grind the stone to get rid of the older image. And uh, also make sure that the stone is as flat as possible and pretty much everything's clean and stuff. So once they do that, they get a special gum arabic and uh, pretty much clear off the edges to make it a perfectly uh, square and, or area uh, for drawing on. And then they draw on it in this area right here, um, next to this tub right here, with uh, grease markers. And they have to be very careful not to touch or breathe on the, uh, the uh, stone. Otherwise they uh, risk uh, compromising uh, the main image. Uh, once they get done with all that process, they have to go through a specific acid process, which I don't really know too much about, but uh, once it's done, it goes through this press right here. And I think it takes like a couple days before it's ready after that. It's like an entire month long process. Uh, but once you complete, you have a stone that can make hundreds to thousands of uh, the same print over and over again. And it's definitely worth the, uh, the long and arduous task. And uh, this is actually the uh, main press that they use for both the uh, dry point prints as well as the litho prints. And uh, just to kind of just show you a little bit of other stuff that goes on around here, uh, we also have some students that are currently working on uh, watercolor paintings because uh, the printmaking professor also uh, teaches watercolor ring right now. So you're gonna see a lot of that in this area as well. So that pretty much wraps up everything in the art department. I hope you enjoy it and you guys have a wonderful day.
Hello guys, my name is Bruno Vietri. I'm a sophomore here at Cameron University and I'm majoring in psychology and I'm doing a minor in health. And then today I will show you the CEDES building, the center of technology. Hello guys again, here I am in the collaboration room. I will show you some stuff that you can use if you are a student in Cameron. Here we have the cricket machine where you can check out, check out some stuff and make some t-shirts that you see, a camera, whatever you want. We also have computers to study. Um, we also have virtual reality system. Uh, I use in the summer uh, to practice some music with one of my teammates. And we also have the free chargers and we have the computer to play some video games. Well guys, Ceres uh, is a two floor building. In the second building, there are some businesses offices. The reason why there is some businesses offices is for the students of Cameroons to make the internship here and not going out of town. The name of these offices are AliExer, 580 Group, Oklahoma Sports Network, Red River Publishing and Stripes Media. Well guys, this is information on technology services where students of Cameroon come by if they have an issue regarding to the internet. Today I stepped by because one of my teammates was having a problem with the internet and they helped me with that. They also help uh, we have students working. So if you're in class and you're having troubles with the Zoom or the internet, uh, they come by and help you. Here I am guys at the conference room. Here Cameron holds a lot of events such as workshops, seminars and some organizations rent this room to hold uh, another events. I also come here uh, to do athletic meetings and I also come here uh, to get some extra credit points to my uh, college algebra class. All right guys, last thing I will show you is the outside patio area where you can hang out with friends and you can do some homework. Also, if the weather is nice, you can chill out here and eat some food. It's such a nice, nice place to be here in Cameroon.
Hi guys, it's Jojo again. Um, right now we're in the Aggie gym. In here we have our gymnasium as well as the athletic training room for injured athletes or athletes that just want to get more strength in their muscles. Um, in this building, we also host all of our home basketball and volleyball games, as well as a really big pep rally that we have each fall called Aggie Madness. So at this pep rally, we give away all types of raffle items and you also get to meet all of the sports teams. The cheerleaders do a performance and it is very interesting to watch because they pull out all the stops and do all kinds of uh, activities that they don't normally get to do during season. Home games are free for all students. You just bring your student ID and show them at the gate and they'll let you in. Home games are really fun and really interesting to watch just because those are students in your classes because we, our students are student athletes. So that means that they also go to class as well as worry about all of their athlete, athletics. All right guys, so this is where all of the magic happens. This is where all of our home games are held as well as homecoming festivities, which we have each spring where we crown the Cameron Monarch. Over here in the stands behind me, since we have COVID protocols in place, we are limiting the amount of fans that are actually in seat. So we have our lovely cardboard cutouts of each fan and they come to every practice and support us and we love our fans. Another thing worth mentioning is how our student athletes are being protected at this time. So each morning when the athlete wakes up, they have a symptom check to do, which is due by 10 a.m. And if you don't submit your symptom check, you don't practice that day, which is really a deterrent for our athletes because each one of us wants to be on the court or in our prospective sport as much as we can so we can learn as much as we can about our sport. Okay, so here we have the athletic training room for athletes. In here, they can get therapy before or after their athletic event or practice. We have multiple beds and taping stations for uh, rehab and prehab. Over here, we have stretching stations as well and strengthening stations. In here, you can get electrotherapy stem or cupping or just in general massage and stretching by an athletic trainer.
Hi guys, it's Anastasia. Um, I just wanna let you guys know that I'm a junior here at Cameron and my major is psychology. I'm also minoring in criminal justice and in theater. And today I decided that I wanted to talk to you guys about student housing. And so over there is North Shepler. And then over on this side is South Shepler. And I'm actually gonna take you guys up into South Shepler to show you our showroom. And just to let you guys get a feel of what your possible new home will look like. Hey guys, so now we're in the laundry room. As you can see, we have multiple washers and then we have multiple dryers. Um, and then on the other side, there's some washer and dryers over there. And as you can see, um, we have a student doing her laundry, so it's completely free and you don't have to pay anything to do your laundry. You just come down and of course you do have to swipe into the laundry room too. So that's also another safe thing that's on campus for you. Okay guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and take you into our elevators as you can see. And then I'm gonna show you that you have to swipe in order to go up to the residential floors. Um, so you are perfectly safe. Nobody but the people who live on that floor can swipe up and come up to the floor. So step here we are, let's step out. Going up. So we're stepping out on the floor so you guys can see. So you'll step off and right here, this is an RA, which is a resident assistant who you will have on your floor and they're just there for any questions you have about housing or any other questions that you might have. Um, and then if you just like walk one way, you can see all like the rooms and I'm gonna take you in to see our showroom, which is this way. Okay guys, so we're here in our showroom, so let me take you inside. So as you can see, we have um, two twin beds and then a little desk. Um, so we like to design it like this, just so you guys can get an idea of what a dorm would look like. Of course, your guys' will be a little bit different because it's gonna be designed to you guys, however you guys wanna do it. Um, you, we also have, if you wanna look this way, we have some closets that you guys will be able to just hang stuff up in and everything. And then we also have drawers for you to put all your nice little cute clothes. Um, but this is pretty much it. We also have um, a single floor, which will have a queen bed. And um, normally if those fill up really fast, if you really wanna just live by yourself, you can also get a room like this and you can just push the beds together. I mean. Why not? It's your room. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and move on and show you rooms in the village. So before we move on and show you the village, I just wanted to show you um, the bathrooms to show you that it is a community bathroom um, and you will have to share it with a bunch of people. So we normally like to keep it super clean. And of course you will have custodians come in and every day and they'll take out the trash and they'll clean everything. Um, and then these are the showers. As you can see, you have like one curtain here and then there's only another curtain there. Um, just so you, you know, super private, just for you. Um, but you have one on one end of the hall and then you have another one on the other end of the hall. So just, you know, depending. So while we're still here, I just wanted to show you guys the community lounge. Um, because it is a community space, you guys will have to take very good care of everything that's in here. Um, just so you guys don't get fined, just so um, everybody on the floor doesn't get fined. Because if we don't really know who broke anything, then you know, we have to find everybody and we really don't want that. Um, especially since college is already expensive. But this is what it looks like. You're free to come in here and you can hang out with your friends on the floor. And um, sometimes people bring in, like if they have game systems, you can hook it up and play on the TV. But this is what it looks like. So one of the cool things that we actually have um, in the Shepler Towers is we have direct access to the campus police, which is located in South Shepler. And it's directly like right off the elevators, as you can see. Um, but you're able to go in there from Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. If you have any questions or if you lost anything, um, they're definitely willing to help you. 
Um, you can also file like reports in there in case like you think somebody stole something from you or anything and they're more than willing to help anytime. So I would definitely go visit them if you ever have any issues. So I wanted to show you guys the cafeteria just so you can see. So students who have a housing meal plan will come in here and you will give your card to the nice lady that normally sits here and you will be able to swipe it and then you'll be able to come in here and you'll be able to get your meals. As you can see, they have tons of places for you to sit. Um, and then when you walk in, you'll come over here to the little buffet line and you'll be able to get anything that you want. Um, and they serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner, of course. So you guys will never go hungry. And then say like the MCC's closed um, over the weekend, and, but you still wanna drink. They have some drinks here that you're always able to purchase with your flex cash. But this is the cafeteria and I really hope that if you guys do live on campus, that you definitely come into the cafeteria and I can definitely see you guys. Okay guys, so I also wanted to show you that there's a computer lab right here in Shepler. It's more towards the north side, um, but if you don't wanna walk all the way to the library or if you're really in a bind, you can always just come right downstairs and come in here and you're able to print in here as well. Just so you guys know, I definitely come in here a lot and I definitely like using it when I don't wanna walk all the way to the library. Okay guys, so I also wanted to show you that these little things behind me are the mailboxes. So if you ever get mail sent to you, then you could just bring your key down here and put it in and just get your mail out. Um, and we're also over in North so South also has their own little mailbox area, but since we're over North, I just wanted to show you North. And as you can see, North also has elevators that take them upstairs. And um, the guys' dorms are also the same over there, except that they also have two single floors instead of just one like the girls do. But I think something that's also really amazing is that we also have a student wellness center um, that you guys are able to use at any time. I would definitely use them. They have things like therapists in case you need to like talk to somebody. Um, you're able to see a doctor. They're able to prescribe you things. You're able to get a bunch of other things from the wellness center and you already have to pay a wellness fee. So I would go ahead and use them any chance you get. You won't regret it, I promise. Okay guys, so now we're actually in the student housing office and I just wanted to show you what it looked like a little bit. So first, I wanted to show you um, the student housing office, actual office part. Um, so if you have any packages, this is where you would go, which is a little bit different than your mail, like I mentioned earlier. Um, so you'll come in here when they say that you have a package and you'll just pick it up from their office assistant. Um, if you have any questions regarding housing, this is where you would come and you just ask them. Um, so just, and these people are really nice. So they'd be more than glad to help you out. Um, and now going over into this big room that we like to call the great room. So they have like a little sitting area with a TV that you are more than welcome to come in here and use. A lot of students do use it. Um, and then they have a bunch of other little sitting areas just for you and your friends to hang out in. And then they also have um, some cool little things that you can also do in here, like this pool table. I personally like to come in here and play pool with my best friend, even though she totally just wins every time. Um, but you're able to do this with your friends and everything. Um, they also have a library down the hall, which I will be more than glad to show you here in a little bit. But also in this building, they also have another computer lab, like I mentioned over in Sheckler, um, but this is for the village residents. So with that being said, let's go show you the library. Okay guys, so like I mentioned earlier, we do have a computer lab in that student housing office building. As you can see, we do, they're right there. Um, it's a little bit messy right now just because they're trying to um, fix the computers and get them all ready, especially, you know, now. And so don't mind those. They're normally all against this wall as well as all against that wall, but you're able to come in here and you can use them anytime you want. All you have to do is swipe in. Um, you're able to print from here. I know a lot of students use this area and like this area because of how exclusive it is. Um, so 
you know, again, if you don't want to go to the library, this is another location that you're able to just use the computers and print whenever you want to. And I definitely encourage you guys to do that.
Hi guys, I'm Jojo. I'm a junior studying psychology and criminal justice. The building we're in now is Howell Hall. Um, in this building, we have the IT department as well as the Hi guys, my name is Jojo. I'm a junior here at Cameron studying psychology and criminal justice. Right now we are in Howell Hall, which houses our IT department. Um, right now we're going into a classroom that has a lot of computer lab access. Uh, students in these classes have access to a lot of Adobe applications for their time here at Cameron, as well as a lot of uh, electronics to work on when they're studying in their courses. In this building we also have the Title IX office which is the Office of Equal Opportunity on campus. Um, that is important because we just want everyone to know that at Cameron we are 100% equal opportunity and we really enjoy making sure that our students feel safe on campus and in their classes as well. Right now I'm in the electronics lab for computer technology majors. Uh, in here, they actually get to take all of the information they learn in class and move it hands-on for networking and how to apply routers and all of the networks uh, associated with that. Right now, we're in an ITV classroom, which is offered a lot in Howell Hall. Uh, what an ITV class is, is there is a professor in one classroom setting, and there's another classroom in some other town and the professor will zoom in so that we can offer further diversity in classes across different campuses. All right, so now we're done with Howell Hall and I'm gonna take you guys over to Birch. Now we are in Birch Hall. and the ground level floor, we have the offices for our military science advisors and professors, as well as the mathematics lab. On the sub-level floor, we have all of our mathematics professors, offices as well as the department of teaching and learning and then on the third floor which is the top floor we have a lot of classrooms available for students here we are on the sub level with the department of mathematics uh, in the department of mathematics the professors are actually the ones with the hands-on experience with the students helping them set up research opportunities as well as graduate level programs making sure that they are ready for graduate school Another really cool thing that Birch Hall offers its students is an interaction area where they can come and work on group projects as well as make social connections with other people in their classes. Another thing down this area, we have the Office of Teaching and Learning on this side. Now we are back on the first floor of Birch Hall uh, in front of the Military Science Department. Our Military Science houses our ROTC program. Fun fact, we are the third highest ranked in the nation, including all D1 schools. We have had two recipients of the Medal of Honor come out of Cameron. Graduates of our ROTC program graduate as an officer in the U.S. Army. Now we are in the mathematics lab in Birch Hall. This place is a really good opportunity for students, not only in the math department, but also for general education courses. You can come in here and get help with math classes or statistics classes, and it is free for all students currently enrolled. Also, another opportunity with this for math majors is an opportunity to further their experience and be able to teach others how to do math if that is something that they would like to do in their future so they can gain experience with that. Another opportunity provided by the Mathematics Lab is part of a work-study program, which also gives students the opportunity to not only teach but help learn how to teach students how to do math. Now we are on the third floor of Birch Hall. Up here is really a lot of classrooms and computer labs available to students, but also we have the Student Support Services Mathematics Lab for those of you who are a part of SSS, and that is another place where you can go to get assistance with classes.
Hi, my name is Christy Alvarado. I am a freshman business major majoring in business administration management, and I'm gonna take you inside the library today to show you around. So now that we're in the library, I'm gonna show you one of the important features about the library, which is our circulation desk. Uh, if you'll see, it's like the very first thing you'll see whenever you come into the library. Um, they help a lot, especially whenever you're a first time uh, student in the library and you don't know your way around yet. Um, over here, they offer a lot of services. So they offer college textbooks and they also offer student supplies such as calculators to check out for students. Mm -hmm. Another thing that they do here is they will look up a book number for you uh, if you don't want to use the computer yourself. Um, they are really good with helping you find research uh, and database entries. So another cool thing about the circulation desk. Another cool feature that our library offers is free computer usage as well as unlimited printing. It's really good for those late nights and this is one of the only computer labs that stays open a little bit later for students. So it's kind of cool whenever you need to do a project with a friend or uh, get something done for a professor. As we walk back from the front area and past the circulation desk, you will find our new book section as well as our graphic novel section. I'll go ahead and take you back here. Right past our new books and graphic novels section, we have Cameron's Family Room here in the library. It's really good for parents uh, to come in and study late nights while also bringing their children. Um, since Cameron has such a diverse student population, it's a nice thing that we offer for students here. And briefly, I want to show you one of the cool things about our library is that we have a movie collection. So you are free to check this out as a student. And it's kind of cool because you get the DVDs uh, here on campus. And our reference table is really good for students, especially whenever you're working on an essay and assignment and you need information or sources. You can come here, look them up, and then we'll find them for you here at the library. So as we enter the digital media lab, you will find that we have a sound and audio board section here for students to use. You can record your music as well as different voiceovers, things like that you can use here. And as we move over here, you will find our computer section where students can have full access to the Adobe suite such as Photoshop and Premiere, as well as digital tablets to use on the computers. And over here, you will find a light board for students to use, especially if you are an artist and you want to trace some work. We do have two of those here in the library. And as we move further back into the digital media lab, we have books to check out with all our software. Over here is our equipment checkout for students. Students are able to check out any of these equipments such as audio and visual devices, cameras, tripods, GoPros, and mics. And another cool thing that's offered to students here on campus is digital uh, 3D printing where you can use the computers and create your own digital artwork and have it 3D printed. So here are some of the And then lastly, over here, we do have some of our digital media staff here able to help whenever you have questions about certain equipments, projects, or even needing to rent out a green screen. We have all that here in the digital media lab, as well as the collaboration table. Uh, it's a whiteboard table that you and your friends can come in and use if you have a project that you want to work on. And overall, the digital media lab is a really useful resource for students here on campus. Uh, it's free to use, so definitely come check it out because it's actually one of our cooler places on campus um, in terms of checking out different sources of media. And as we are moving out of the digital media lab, you will find that we have a study area slash reference area for students. Cameron also offers free books that students can take home with them. And it's a really good another resource when it comes to having another area to study in the library. As we move away from the study and reference area, I just wanna quickly show you these little green ears that are throughout the library. Uh, they monitor the sound uh, within the library. Uh, if it turns red, you're a little too loud, so you might need to quiet down, but it's picking me up now. <laughs> but I'll show you this way. And as we go further past that area, you will find classrooms. There are some classrooms that are hosted in the library, so if you do have a class in the library, um, You'll go to the left and it'll be down the hall. 
Um, they also offer study rooms here in the library, which I think is a really cool feature as a student, especially because I've used it personally. Uh, I've taken my laptop in here, I've had a couple friends in here before that have helped me on a project, and it's just a really nice resource, especially if you need a quiet study area and a thing to collaborate or a space to collaborate with other students. Now that we've moved you up to the second floor, you will find thousands of references and book material for you to use, as well as additional study rooms here in the library. Other than the thousands of resources that we offer here in the upstairs, uh, we do have different study areas where you can study and work on group projects with other students. Um, it's a nicer area, especially if you want to spread out and really get into your study needs.
Good morning, my name is Khalil Cabrera Tosado and I am a senior here at Kimmer University and I um, am finishing my bachelor's degree uh, this spring as a bachelor's of music in vocal performance. Um, that's one of the degrees that you can get here at the music building. You can also become just a music uh, bachelor's of arts, which is a music minor and you can also become a bachelor's of music in education where you can teach the wonderful creativity of music right now i am standing in the foyer i think that's how you pronounce it and um it's one of the nice buildings that we have like we you can see we have tons of chandeliers and nice lighting here um right now behind me is a photocopy machine room and uh right here we have a bulletin board where we can announce upcoming concerts and um important announcements from all around campus as well as the dean's office and uh this is kind of like the main lobby area. Um, we used to have couches and stuff like that, but because of COVID, we kind of got rid of them for the safety of other people. Right now, I don't have my mask on because I'm pretty much the only one here because classes just started. But uh, one of the rooms that I did want to show you, it's kind of one of the most important rooms, is uh, the band room, obviously. Um, yes, uh, I am a vocal performance major. Yes, so that means I sing, but uh here in the music building you have the liberty to to try any ensemble that you want to do so in here this is the band room right now there's not any instruments out because they're securely storaged there's one right there oh but you see there's marimbas and stuff like that um here there is concert band jazz band orchestra strings Sometimes they, they practice here. And also any of the methods, um, classes, like woodwind methods, percussion methods, brass methods, um, that's all learned, and string methods, they're all learned in this, um, in this room because, well, the instruments are here, which is also very beneficial. Um, percussion ensemble as well is here where it's just the focus is on percussion and that is the one of the best classes that you can take even if you're not interested in percussion anything um i think it's a very good experience if you do want to try to get in i am in percussion ensemble and it is the best class that i've been in the music building um here we also sometimes do like small concerts or recitals here just because the lighting is bomb but I mean that's your choice but usually we usually go to the recital hall or the theater and I will I'm actually gonna show you the recital hall so that way you can see what I am talking about so all right so I am about to enter the recital hall which there I think is a class is about to start but I don't think if I just show so if you see this is the recital hall and uh sorry go ahead so this is the recital hall and um as you can see there's a whole bunch of chairs and i think um, i think american popular music is about to start and basically you just listen about pop and there's dr little Hello. say hi dr little Hello. i'm about to show you his class because he's about to teach sight singing and ear training which is where you learn how to sing or read music without having to actually notate the things and it's just a it's just practice in order for you to improve your approach if you will approach in um on how to read music right now i'm in the hallway of the faculty offices right here you can find every every faculty member here um so we have like for example dr hoffner he is a vocal coach he is uh, my vocal coach he also teaches composition he also um, teaches post tonal um a lot of many classes uh miss lambert she is an adjunct teacher here in the music building and she is um she teaches piano here uh we have dr morin here she's right now she's teaching a lesson i'm gonna see if i can get in Hi. I am recording a vlog so of the music building. So I just So if you could like So this is Dr. Morin and she's giving a lesson. That's Rachel. Say hi Rachel. 
And uh, Dr. Morris, she teaches choir and she also teaches voice lesson, just like most of the um, vocal coaches here. And so that's them. They yeah. look great. Have the camera in. <laughs> Thank you. And so uh, if we keep going, we have Dr. Underwood here. She is a strings teacher and she also teaches um, music history, which is a very important class and it's actually really interesting. Um, this is Dr. Little's office. He teaches theory, sight singing, ear training, and um, he teaches jazz. His major is jazz. He's a phenomenal jazz um, uh, performer. He plays a lot, of, tons of instruments, improv, anything that you want to know about jazz. He's, he's the guy that you want to go to. This is the famous office of Dr. Wong. She is a phenomenal piano player, uh, piano performer and she is an amazing teacher. She only teaches um, Ameri uh, art, music appreciation, and piano. So she has music students, she has a piano class accompaniment um, where she teaches them phenomenally about the importance of accompanying other students, vocal students. Um, this is Dr. Kaspar's office. He also teaches theory um, and American popular music, which is the class that we just entered, and a concert band. This classroom, there's a class in there, but that classroom is actually very important because we teach right now, and art class is happening in there, but um, we usually teach conducting in that class because there's a huge mirror in there, and um, there's a huge mirror in there, so that way whenever you start conducting, you can see like how you're doing, and um, how, you're, how you're conducting your sense to see if you're doing it correctly, doing it accurately, and uh, it's a very good room. We also <laughs> kind of use that room to um, prepare ourselves for like an, a performance, like a concert, choir, or uh, an opera. We usually go in there, that's our dressing room, because we usually do everything in the recital hall. It's a really fun room, we usually, um, the, the lighting there is also great, we have, uh, up. Lots of fun in there. We usually put music on, eat food in there, and uh, have a good time. Uh, this is an important room because there is. This is Heather, by the way. Hi. <laughs> and this is the locker room for the instrumentalists. Um, they can use uh, this room to put away their instruments. They give you a lock uh, when you come here and um, they have a lot of different sizes obviously for the bigger instruments and the smaller instruments as well. So if we keep going, I think I'm gonna about to show you the piano class that's going on right now. They're doing a test so that's why we're not going in there, but that's totally fine. We're gonna go to the slight singing room then. Hello. Hello, I'm recording a vlog for the music department and uh, I just wanted to show off one of my favorite classes with, with them. <laughs> so this is where they're doing sight singing and ear training, which is basically um, what I explained on the way. But that's Dr. Little, the, the jazz professor. And um, if we will keep going, I believe I'm gonna take you guys to Hager Hall, which is where all the practice rooms are and uh, I'll see you in a minute. Hey, it's me again. Um, I'm about to enter Hager All. Um, only music majors can access this room, so um, you could say we're pretty exclusive. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm just entering the doors, and here, um, I just wanna show you, this is basically uh, where we have our practice rooms. This used to be a classroom, but it's currently under remodelation because we have these. Um, this is a really cool uh, thing that just came out. Um, it's actually very popular in UCO, but um, we thought it would be very beneficial to have it here as well. So this is called a sound lock. It's a sound isolation room. You can obviously hear that the sound immediately muffled. And if you see here, they have, um, you have like different functions that you can do. So you can definitely practice in here. Uh, no one will be able to hear you and you can record yourself and then play back um and they have different like different acoustics i guess so we can put a cathedral and if i start talking wait a minute if i 
I'm trying to get to the speaker. If I start talking, you can kind of hear that cathedral sound like. So I thought that was pretty cool. And um, obviously there's a piano in each practice room here. So you can practice obviously your um, <clears throat> voice part if you just want to hit the notes, but also you can practice your piano parts um, for the piano classes, which um, is the class that I tried to show you, but they were taking a test right now. In that class, you learn the basic rudiments, if you will, about piano. So scales, arpeggios, major minor scales, The um, you do some works. So like, for example, you can do some solo works, you do duet works with other people. Um, and it's a really, it's a great class. And uh, if it's a great resource to use when you're practicing, when, yeah, I guess when you're practicing or when you are analyzing uh, a piece of music, you can use a piano to help you what kind of chord you have or what kind of um, song the key is in. So if we just keep going, in this office, we have one of the faculty member offices here, and it is Dr. Lambert. He teaches percussion, counterpoint, um, forms and analysis, which is basically all um, requisites, I guess, to in order, it'll be on your degree works in order for you to graduate. And they're also really great classes for you to take uh, being a music major. Uh, this is one of the, this is also a percussion studio right here. I usually practice all of the stuff that I need for percussion ensemble or um, when I have a duet with someone or if I just want to work on my marimba pieces, this is a marimba. Basically, it looks like a very, it looks like a piano, but obviously you play it with sticks and it is made out of wood. Um, right here. <laughs> It's, there's a huge fan, but this is also another percussion studio where you can practice your drum sets And like I said, everything looks kind of like a big mess right now, but it's because everything got really affected There's also a piano here um, This is a practice room with a grand piano um, There are practice rooms. There are Three practice rooms with grand pianos and the rest of them have wall pianos. This is the office of Miss Yuka Little and uh, she is an accompanist but she also she used to teach piano she was my piano teacher and she usually and she this is her office for to accompany the students and she gives private uh, piano lessons as well um, so as you can see oh, this is another percussion uh, studio uh, a practice room where you can practice your timpani another marimba uh, there's an, another piano here if we keep going there's um, that this whole hallway is just every single door that you see has a piano and it is um, that you can like I said practice your repertoire you can practice your piano skills you can practice anything that you really want if you just want to come in here and study um, like for example, my classes, now that they are, well, I have one class that is online, completely online, so we meet on Zoom, but um, right after that, I have a class, so I usually just set up my computer here, and I take the class in here, you're by yourself, you can control the temperature, I, it's really something that's beneficial, not just for, um, I mean, yes, the primary reason for it is to practice, but also you can use it for anything. If you just want to sit in there and just play with the piano, make a song, you can as well. Um, I'm really glad that you guys took the time to see this uh, experience. You got to experience this with me. Being a music major is a really, really beneficial major to have. Um, the arts are very important to the community. Uh, everyone loves music everyone and yes here as an undergrad you really the influence that they want you to learn is classical but it's not just classical you have the opportunity to learn uh, a lot of great music to appreciate you have a lot of opportunities to uh, sing anything that you practically want broadway there's a lot of we do a lot of broadway works we do operatic works things from the romantic period, things from the classical period, the Baroque, the Renaissance, anything that you desire. Um, the professors are here, the faculty is here to help you um, see that you can 
do what you like to do that you what you enjoy to do and like i said each ensemble is very inviting if you are strictly vocal that doesn't mean you can only take vocal classes like me i am strictly vocal but i am taking percussion ensemble i was once in band i um i have many friends that are um instrumental majors and they're in choir and they enjoy it there are people who um as a as a performance major you can be a voice major or a concentration of vocal performance instrumental performance or piano performance uh, or strings performance um for education you can do education in voice you can um do education in in instrumental um and that's and that's definitely up to you. You have the liberty to try any instrument that you want. The professors are here to give you lessons to so that way to see if you actually are passionate about that instrument and they're very patient with you and I really do admire that of the of the faculty team that's in the music department. Um, other than that, it's a wonderful place to be in everything. As you can see that the the music building is um, it's smaller in average than most of the buildings here at Cameron University, but that kind of makes it a little better because then you are more united with the students, you are more united with the faculty members, you just feel like everyone is just one big family and that's how they treat you. Everyone is accepted here, um, music majors and non-majors who just want to take choir classes, we respect that, we respect your decisions. Um, but like I said, thank you so much for taking this time to experience the music building and the practice room. Um, we hope to see you uh, here as a music major pursuing whatever you wanna do as if you wanna sing, if you want to play an instrument or just wanna learn music, we, we really do appreciate you uh, joining our team. And we really think you're gonna have as much of a blast as, uh, as much of a blast that I have had my four years here at Cameron University uh, the, in the music department. So uh, once again, thank you for experiencing with this and we hope to see you soon. Hello, my name is Kat Monahan, and I am a senior in psychology here at Cameron University. Today, I will be giving you a, a virtual tour of the McMahon Centennial Complex, which is also known as the MCC. Behind me, you will see some banners from our previous years um, that freshmen and incoming students were able to sign. Now we are working our way towards the middle of the MCC where all the seating is at. We have uh, tables, booths, um, just places where people can study, have Zoom sessions, talk to their friends, and enjoy um, a good meal. Over here is the MCC food court. It has a Starbucks, 
uh, sub connection, pickaxe grill, and they also have like smoothies and protein shakes that you can also pick up here. All right, so right behind me are some of our pool tables um, and the desk over there is where you can check out the equipment to use the pool tables and they also have other things for games. We also have a lounge area right over here behind me where you can come in between classes just to relax and to meet up with your friends. We also have a few vending machine options um, of sodas and snacks. So in here is the in, in as much foundation art gallery. Students who are in art in any grade can um, submit their work from whatever was accepted from the art gallery previously. So currently we have a Native American art gallery. And then I'm gonna work my way over here. Um, right here is the one stop, which is where you will be able to pick up your student ID, um, your parking permit. They also have information on your account balance for your tuition and if you need to uh, pay for any of your bills you can pay them here or online on your Aggie Access. They also have scholarship information and then over here is the Cameron bookstore and this is where you can pick up all your Cameron gear and your textbooks. So this is the Cameron bookstore and you will be able to buy um, Cameron gear here. You, also, you can pick up stuff for commencement like your cap and gown and your tassels. Uh, another thing that you can purchase in the bookstore are uh, the test booklets, scantrons, and school supplies. Over here, you can, um, we have a post office that you can use only for um, can only be delivered within the United States. And then back here, we have some backpacks and this is where you would pick up your textbooks or um, uh, student access codes as well. Now we're upstairs in the MCC and this is the MCC ballroom. As you can see behind me, they are about to have an event for ROTC. Uh, this room is known for events for students to attend and have a good time, um, take a break from studies, and um, normally we have PAC events in here, which is Programming Activities Council, and we have had hypnotists, comedians, magicians, also like smaller events like Stuff and Emoji, Cupcake Wars. This is the Buddy Green Room, and this is one of the rooms that you are able to uh, rent out if you're a student on campus. And this is where um, PAC would meet. We also have sororities, fraternities, and other organizations that will meet in here. We have about 60 organizations on campus, so this room is pretty known to most CU students. This is the Office of Campus Life. We have over 60 organizations here on campus. Also in this office, they do the Aggie Escape for incoming freshmen, also the Day in the Park, and they help students um, who are eligible for the food bank. Another thing that Office of Campus Life does is they ha have events here on campus and do free giveaways of Cameron swag. Recently they have done mugs, socks, pennants, and other fun swag items. And another thing about Campus Life is they do um, homecoming week and <laughs> welcome week here as well. All right, and this is the student workroom. This is where organizations will meet and paint banners for their events. Um, they also have other supplies in here as well, and you can check out a locker for your organization.
Hi guys, I'm Navila. I'm a business administration major with a concentration in management. I am an Aggie ambassador and will be giving you guys a tour of Nance Boyer. This is Nance Boyer. When you first walk in, this is the Department of um, Psychology, Communications, Education, and Foreign Languages. These are all classes over here, as well as this really long haul. Um, these are a whole bunch of classes that are mostly focused in education and literature, writing. Um, on the second floor, you'll find a Center for Writers located in the Center for Academic Success. Um, I'm going to take you guys in here and show you guys what's going on in here. Okay, we are now here in the Centers for Writing. Um, this is a great building and office to um, get resources to help you out with your subjects. This provides tutoring in all subjects, including writing. We have tutors here available even in the evening time. Um, we, they can help you plan out for the rest of the semester. They can help you organize your syllabus. Um, I've even came here before my freshman year to help get help on papers. Um, it's a really good resource for any student struggling. So I just brought you guys in here to one of the classrooms here located in Nance Boyer. This is kind of the setup of what it looks like in a classroom setting. In this building, you'll find a lot of the classes that are relative to the degree program of communications, education, English, foreign language, and psychology. Okay, I am now here in the Language Learning Center that is located in the second floor of Nance Boyer. Over here, you guys will find resources to help you with any foreign language classes that you guys are taking, which include Spanish, French, German, and Russian. We have two professors available here that will actually help you that are real professors here, as well as foreign exchange students that are native to the language and can help you with those classes.
Hi, my name is Chester Porter, and I'm with the Aggie Ambassador Program here at Cameron University. I'm also an accounting major going for his master's in business administration, and I'm here to show you Ross Hall. Here we have the Ross Hall Auditorium. It's one of the largest rooms on campus, and it's great for following COVID precautions. Here, you'll be able to take your classes, you can listen to lectures, or have organizational meetings. Here, we have one of two computer labs available in Ross Hall. Here, you can do your classwork, correspond with your teachers, and print out any necessary materials between your classes throughout your day. Here in the Ross Hall Business Department at Cameron University, we also have several programs. Bank First donated $100,000 to Cameron University for us to use to build a stock and bond portfolio. Over the 2014 year, we beat the S&P index by 2.5% and we turned that $100,000 into $800,000. I mentioned before about Bank First and how they gave the school $100,000 to help students build a portfolio and invest. Well, in here is where the investing takes place. Behind me, you'll see our ticker where we can track the performance of different uh, companies and follow the S&P index. And we have computers to work with partners and individuals on their projects for business. We have several programs available in Ross Hall, as well as an accounting uh, club where we have Platinum Aggie status. Behind me, you'll see several of the awards our business department has won throughout the years. We've also beaten the S&P index in 2014, and we did it by quite a bit, 2.5% over uh, the S&P's expectations for bonds in accounting. So if you wanna build a portfolio and do some amazing stuff, this is the department to work in. Here in the Ross Hall Business Department, you can get degrees as in an Associates in Science Business, a Bachelor's of Accounting, a Bachelor's of Business Administration, or a Master's of Business Administration or a Master's of Science and Organizational Leadership. One of the good things about getting a Bachelor's of Accounting here at uh, Ross Hall is that with just 33 more hours, you can turn that into a Master's of Business Administration or after doing those 33 hours, you could take your CPA exam. And with that, you'll be able to go on to even further lengths with your accounting degree.
Hi, my name is Dakota Barbie. I am a technical theater major here at Cameron University, and right now I'm here to show you the theater department. We are currently in the theater lobby, and if you look around, you can see a whole lot of different programs up on the wall of our past performances, and if this is where everybody just kind of waits before our performances start. Every year we have four performances every season. There's a musical in the spring and there are three straight plays or plays that aren't musicals basically. So right now I'm walking towards the box office which is where everybody comes and gets their tickets. If you're a Cameron student you actually get in for free along with some alumni and you can also purchase season tickets if you would like to and then you can just have the whole season and not have to worry about purchasing tickets or reserving your tickets. So this is our whole lobby. And as we move forward, I'd like to take you into the black box, which is our studio theater. And so normally a theater has, you know, the seating and then the stage in front. But with our black box, as you can see, it's just a big black box. And we can, we can actually change our stage to be any kind of shape that we want when we're in here. So we can build a thrust stage where it actually goes into the audience or we can build an alleyway where audience is on either side or an arena stage which is probably one of my favorites where the audience is on all sides of the performers and also whenever we're not performing in this stage right here we are either rehearsing or we're having our some of our specific classes are provided in here, especially acting classes, so that we can, you know, <laughs> work on our performancing before we actually put on our performances. So once you come into the black box, if you keep going, and after you've gone through this big, long area, then we can move into the scene shop, which is my favorite place because I work in the scene shop. So this is the scene shop. It's actually pretty big or <laughs> the uh, ceiling. We actually have past performance props and set pieces that are just kind of hanging around and that you can see just the vast past that we have. A big staple that we have is this paint frame. It goes up about 20 feet in the air and we can put our flats and any kind of drop or anything like that and we can put that up there and it actually moves up and down so that we don't have to get on ladders. It's safer that way and it's a lot easier to see the whole picture. And so this is actually the only school in the state that has a paint frame like this and it goes down again 20 feet down to the ground we also have a separate metalworking shop right behind there there's welding equipment there's cutting equipment all of that kind of stuff just for metal because you can't build everything out of just wood sometimes you need more structurally sound things or anything kind of like that a certain look for something so we have metal as well we have a lot of different tools. We use power tools, we use uh, hand holes, anything like that. But when you're in the theater and if you're in the department, you actually have to take something called theater practicum where you're actually in the shop. If you're, you could be in the scene shop or in the costume shop. Either way, you have to be in it for the whole semester and that's eight semesters. And you're in here for three hours out of the week and you learn so much about how it actually all comes to be and how you can actually create, you know, the worlds that we show. Specifically in the scene shop, we train things like knowing your PPE, your personal protective equipment. You learn how to use power tools, how to build things, how to read construction uh, designs and how to just kind of build what we need. Also, you learn uh, scene painting. Uh, sometimes we'll work on props in the scene shop and everything else like that. So, I'm trying to think. There's also, because we have so many power tools, we also have something called the tool crib. And if I turn on this light, then you can see we have a whole wall of just the tool crib, the different tools, different things we use. There's actually a whole thing just for wheels. And it's only for wheels that we use for wagons which are moving platforms so that we can change scenes quickly. 
All right, out of here. Okay, we have our table saw. The table saw is actually really important because if you have it on and your hand runs through and it were, if it were to hit the blade, it actually drops down and we, uh, you would have to replace the whole blade. It kind of breaks it. But good thing is your hands are totally fine. All right. Next, I'm going to take you into the scene shop or not the scene shop, I'm sorry. Next, I'm going to take you into the costume shop. And this is where we take measurements and where we create costumes, where we put together costumes, where we do makeup and everything else that we need for specific performance that we are putting on. So first, we can see when you walk in, you have this whole line of sinks and a whole wall of mirrors just important so that we know what we're looking at. Then we can walk through and we see all of our sewing machines. Normally there's like three or four people in here that are making things, working for the scene shop or for the costume shop. And we've got two big long tables so we can work. If you see, there's already a whole lot of fabric and everything else in here. And it's just like a wonder of how much we have and we're never, we have a wonderful costume designer, costume scene, a costume shop supervisor who gets us everything that we need whenever we are putting on a performance and when a student is designing, because he doesn't always design, students also get to design. And as we walk through, we can see the makeup area where the lights come on and we get ready for the action. And then there's changing rooms, everything else in here that we can do. And so when a performance is happening and there's like 10 people in here, if not more, it gets a little crazy. Okay, next I'm going to take you into the, onto the stage actually, which is our big stage, our proscenium stage, which means that there is a, so we have this, the audience in the background we have the audience and then we have the stage but it's covered by an arch and that's called the proscenium okay so we've walked in and this is our stage we have places in the back for storage it's also where our lighting equipment goes and if you look up you can see all of the lighting that's up there that is called the grid if you didn't know and we can actually go all the way up there if we need to and adjust uh the weights and everything else for our pulley system that allows us to actually bring some of the battens that have the lights hanging on them down here so we can actually work on them here instead of having to be on a ladder or anything else. As we look, we see the glorious audience members, which we couldn't do anything without the audience members, obviously. I believe we can seat up to 400 people, but at the moment, because of COVID, we have a limitation of, I believe, 50. But either way, we still put on performances and we're still trying to provide for the audience that we so dearly love. <laughs> okay, so back here, as I said, we have a lot of storage back here that we use and the theater department is actually not the only person or the only people that use the stage. It's also provided for the music department and anyone else that like wants to rent it out and have performances or anything else that they need. A lot of Latin community comes in and we actually work after hours and help let them perform and do whatever they need. Provide a stage, basically. So back there, if we see all of those ropes that are going all the way up and all the way across. The fly system is how we bring drops and any kind of other set pieces that we need into a scene without having to actually bring it in. We just pull a rope and it's on a pulley system, a double pulley system actually, and it allows us to bring things in quickly without having to worry about it. I think the last feature on the stage is probably this piece right here. And you can see it's separated by this and it's called the apron or the lift. It goes all the way down to the basement where our set pieces are or our costumes, props, a lot of stuff like that. And so it goes all the way down so we can just bring big props and set pieces up without having to uh, 
without having to go through the whole process of trying to get it through like the stairs and stuff like that. Uh, we also use it sometimes in shows and a lot of the times for musicals we'll actually put it to a set point and that's where the orchestra goes. It's called the orchestra pit at that point. And only certain people are allowed to actually use the lift and move it up and down, especially because it's brand new and we don't want to break it. But we use it a lot and it's super, super helpful. Lastly, for the theater department, we'll talk more about like the classroom. It also just recently got renovated. So this was all the theater behind the scenes, how we create, where we put it on, where we show it. And then if we go through the costume or through the scene shop, we keep going this way, we get farther and closer to where the professors are, most of them, and where Scott Richards' office is, who is the Dean of the Arts, Music, and Theater Arts. And he, so his office is back this way. And then we have a regular classroom as well. So this is the newly renovated uh, classroom. It used to be where this wall over here actually had a whole projection system on it. And that's where we taught classes and we just had regular seats and everything. But now it's more of a kind of like a little stage in its own. There's actually a raised up area right here and a whole production system. There's brand new LEDs up in the ceiling and LED actually uh, ellipsoidals and everything else. <laughs> and we can use the projector. We can actually program each of these different instruments if we would like to create a whole scene in here. If we really needed to, we could put on a show right up here using just those bad boys. There's, I believe one, two, three, I believe there's six, no, there's three LEDs and there are four of the ellipsoidal LEDs that are up there. Let's meet Susan, hello Susan. <laughs> this is, if you ever need to do anything uh, office or administration wise, you're gonna go into that room and just make sure that you get everything ready and you sign up to talk to Scott Richard in there and everything else. We also have more of our, if you ever need to talk to professors, there's a professor's room right down there and then there's one right here. And then we also have just this cute little lobby area if you ever need to relax right before your classes, which happens a lot actually. So next I'm going to take you outside. And while we don't really use the outside area, it is one of my favorite parts because it is beautiful out here. We have an arena stage that the art students actually at the moment, I believe have sculptures on and then we have just a stage itself. And again, we don't use this area as much, but it is really nice to come out here and just kind of relax with the rest of the theater department and just kind of enjoy the sun when it's really nice, like today. There's also, it's also really good because it reminds you how close you are to the art department or to the music department, either one. Because we are such a small department, we are all such a community and a family that it just really feels really fun. <laughs> Especially if you like to create and you like to be involved and show your work to other people, it's the best thing. And it's really just a bit, it's just a giant community because even though we only have a small community or a small department here and we have just performance majors or technical majors, those are the two uh, degrees that we actually offer, because of that, we also include people from the community and we actually have people specifically for this next musical, we have people just from the community that are for helping us perform and make sure that we have enough people. And so you learn and you create connections and you can kind of just live your life that way. All right, so the last thing on my list is the booth or the stage manager's booth or whatever you want to call it. Either way, this upstairs, is where we have our beautiful technical director <laughs> and our technical assistant. What is your specific name? Stage technician. Stage technician. That's Joey. He's great. <laughs> so this is where we have all of the magic happen during the performances. We have the stage manager's desk, I guess, uh, with the lighting board. We'll normally have a light board operator and a sound board operator, and this is where all the sound happens. And if you look down this way, you can see right onto the stage, which is the most important part. 
oh, over there too. <laughs> As I mentioned, we also put performances on in the black box and there's a whole window right here that lets us see down here for when we need to call for the show as well. Stage manager is one of the most important parts of theater. And if, if we didn't have stage managers and this room, then we wouldn't be able to put on performances. Bye guys. Bye. <laughs> All right, so I believe that's it. I've shown you the whole de theater department and I hope you enjoyed, because I sure did. <laughs> I forget how big this place is. Thank you. <laughs>Hi guys, my name is Taylor Beavers. I am a senior here at Cameron. I am a biology major with a chemistry minor and I'm going to be giving you a tour of the science complex today. Um, it's going to be broken up into basically two areas. The first floor that houses biology majors, allied health, and agriculture. And then the top floor that's going to be chemistry, physics, and engineering. Just a little side note, um, one really cool thing that the Cameron Building uh, for Science houses is um, we actually were able to uh, dig up a mammoth tusk and tooth um, that we found here on campus. Um, this would be that area. 
Um, you can see right here, that's gonna be that tooth. And then clearly the tusk is a little bit longer. Um, that's just one of the many opportunities that um, Cameron actually gives their students to be involved in actual science techniques. Um, so that's one really cool thing that we like to show people who um, are prospective students for Cameron. So another really cool thing about the Cameron Science Complex is in both the downstairs and the upstairs departments, um, there's, an in, there's a little area called the interaction area. Um, so it allows for students to sit, collaborate, work on assignments, work on homework, while being completely surrounded by all of the professor's office in that building. Um, so as you can see, we've got set up for chairs, um, you know, students can group together and work here. Um, there's also a whiteboard present. Um, we do have a few couches for more of a casual setting, but the really important thing about this area is the fact that each and every professor within this department has offices around this area. So if a student is struggling, um, they want that one-on-one -on -one with professors, um, it's a really great opportunity for um, the professor to be able to be available to that student. Um, it's one of those really cool features. Um, I know I personally used it so much when I was taking my courses here um, for human anatomy, um, but any kind of, again, agriculture, allied health, biology, this is gonna be in the downstairs area, which is where we are now. And then I will show you guys the um, chemistry, physics, and engineering area later. So something else that's really cool about Cameron is we want our students to know what our professors are up to, what they're doing, what they're into. Um, one really cool board that we have is a board that it's going to show all the agriculture, uh, biology, and health science um, professors. You can see um, just a couple of the names here. Um, it basically shows what classes they teach, um, what they're involved in on campus, um, and then what kind of um, science they're into. Um, it gives prospective students a really good idea of what would go into um, the programs as well as what each individual uh, professor actually specializes in to give you an idea of what you could be involved in on campus. So just for an idea of what a typical lab would look like on campus, um, this is going to be um, a biology lab that we have. Um, you can see all the tables that we have separated out. Um, this is really convenient, especially now with social distancing, but even in the event that we aren't in social distancing, it's really nice because you have plenty of room to work on everything. Um, Cameron actually has an amazing library of different specimens. These all happen to be um, different plants. This is actually our botany lab. Um, as you can see, very roomy area. Um, each one of them comes with a isolated chamber over in this corner that you can see. Um, that basically assures that we have a good quality airflow throughout the building. Um, and this is just one of the many labs that we have here on campus. So one of the best features of Cameron's um, science programs are that um, we have an anatomy lab that is unlike any other in Oklahoma. Um, there's only one school in the state um, that has the same feature that we do. And this feature is we actually get um, cadavers to work with. Um, so what that means is we get two bodies donated to us each semester or each at the beginning of each year that we use um, for both semesters. Um, and we have our anatomy students actually get to use that um, as a method of gross lab. Um, you can see this is the room that they would be housed in. Um, we can't take the camera in there, um, but within this room, we have lab coats, um, we have different equipment um, so that students can actually get a feel um, for what it would be like to work with a body. Um, they also actually get to see it in person. So when you're reading about a muscle in a book, it's obviously illustrated. Um, so it's not gonna be exactly what you actually see on a body. Um, so we actually get the chance to see what it looks like on a human body. This is really great. It's one of the reasons that our anatomy and physiology programs are some of the best in the state um, and the reason that our nursing majors, um, our medical students um, are so successful later on in their careers. Okay guys, so we're to the part of the tour where we're moved upstairs now. Um, so I'll be showing you just a couple of the features upstairs. Remember, this is gonna be the 
physics, engineering, and chemistry departments. So it's a little bit different um, than downstairs as far as the degrees that you can get. Okay guys, so upstairs um, is one of the computer labs that we have on campus. Um, so one really cool feature about this computer lab that makes it different than every other lab on campus is there's a lot of applications downloaded onto these computers that you can actually use um, and they're different scientific programs specific for data collection, specific for um, say if you're trying to figure out how to draw a molecule of water. Um, there's a lot of animations and ways to be able to do that on these computers and they're the only ones that have them on campus. Um, one other really cool feature is there is a printer, um, so we do have that available to you as well. Um, a lot of the times some lectures will also be in this area, so we do have a full um, chalkboard as well as uh, for slide presentations. Um, so it kind of doubles as a classroom, uh, but for the most part um, it is going to be for the student use. Um, and it's open as long as the science complex is, so you have access to it about 12 hours a day, 7.30 to 7.30. So one other feature about Cameron is that we actually have a tutoring lab. Um, it's gonna be, again, we're on the second floor of the science complex, and this is specific to any kind of science. We have a tutor that's here consistently that um, is there to help you with any um, homework problems. And the tutor actually um, speaks directly with professors. Um, so she gets the homework assignments, um, the quizzes and stuff like that so she can actually help you with those knowing the right answers having that from the professor to lead you in the right direction um, again this lab it's actually connected um, to the computer lab that you were just shown um, but it doubles a lot of people will take time to study in here because it's a quiet area um, and then a lot of people come in for that help that's actually needed um, and the tutor also has um, ways to reach her say if you can't get a hold of her um, by email and things like that um, so it's just another um, resource that Cameron has um, to be able to um, help prospective students um, students that are struggling in classes um, kind of have a better idea of what they're doing in those classes okay guys so we are on the second floor of the science complex and that interaction area that I showed you downstairs in the other departments um, this is going to be the similar setup on the second floor. So again, this is chemistry, physics, and engineering. However, it's the same basic setup in that each professor is surrounding this interaction area in the middle. And again, that just helps with any classwork. Um, if you need to speak directly to a professor about a problem that you're having um, and things of that nature. Okay guys, so we've come to the end of our tour of the science complex. Um, a couple of things I just wanted to go over with you guys is some of the stuff um, that we offer other than our physical structure. Um, we have plenty of clubs that you can be involved in. Um, one of those being biology club. I'm actually the secretary treasurer of that, so I would naturally encourage um, you guys to get involved in that. We also have a chemistry club, and a lot of times those two clubs kind of interact with each other. We do a lot of meetings together um, because sciences like to stick together. Um, we have a lot of really awesome speakers. Right now, they're all via Zoom. However, um, when COVID restrictions lift, um, we should have more in-person speakers. Um, some other things that we do house on this um, area, I already talked about the tutoring center. Um, but you do, again, have access to all of the professors consistently. Um, they're always there for you. Um, each professor actually um, has office hours that are required of them. Um, so you will always have the opportunity um, to reach out to your professors and get the help that you need. Um, but for the most part, the, um, upstairs I was talking about um, is going to be chemistry. Um, so you can do an American Chemical Society um, chemistry degree. You can do, um, I mean, it's a number of things that you can do. We also have engineering um, associates degrees you can get. Um, we also uh, do the um, physics degrees that you can get as well. Um, downstairs, um, we have a lot of people who um, are allied health. Um, we have different biology degree programs. Um, so we've got a uh, cell molecule. Um, we have more of the organismal studies. 
um, and then we also offer um, ag degrees as well um, so that's a pretty wide range of degrees offered in this building and it's one of those things where um, really every aspect of science is covered so it's a pretty great um, building that has a lot of great degrees and a lot of great things and I hope you guys enjoyed this virtual tour. Thank you.